today going to be changing tires on my dirt bike. I got tubeless in them and so that's a little bit something different and I'm not the greatest at it but I'll just show you how I do it. That's what this video is going to be. Step one, best if you clean the bike. Get the tires nice and clean so you don't get any dirt falling in the bead and fucking up your uh, seal. Since I'm using tubeless, it's important. I don't know, maybe it's not, but that's what I do. So, first thing you gotta do, after washing, I guess not the first thing, next thing is make sure you put all these tires in the sun. That's gonna be the biggest, oh you like my poison oak? Anyway, that's gonna be the biggest advantage for you. If you don't do that, you're screwed. It's pretty warm out today. It's probably about 80 degrees, so that concrete right there, those tires are almost too hot to touch. Perfect. All right, there's a rim lock. So we want the other side to be pushed down. I'm gonna take a couple of tire irons and right across from the rim lock right there, I'm gonna put one tire on either side of the spoke that I'm gonna put this bead buddy on. And it just slips in like that. So we're going to start about two inches or so to one side of the rim lock. When you do this, it's really important that you don't grab the red inner liner that of the tubeless. And that little high pressure tube valve, that little valve sticking out I just pointed to, if you grab the red liner, uh, that tube, that valve will uh, push back in and out, and you can also can also peer down into the rim and see if you're getting the the red liner. And I was, so I'm gonna try it uh, on the other side of the rim lock now, and try to peel the tire back. And now I'm just making sure that the tire is actually pushed down into the center of the rim a little bit more, and see if that was part of my troubles. All right, there we go. Now I'm pulling it back and I'm I'm looking inside. Oh, okay, hang on now. Sometimes it's hard. You gotta. I'm looking inside, and I think I accidentally grabbed the rim lock on this one. But uh, you know, I'm not fast forwarding any any of this. I'm just kind of showing you how I was struggling along. But and also I would have kept the audio except for I had Bob Dylan playing. Anyways, right here I uh, I could see that I have that I don't I didn't grab the red liner, so I'm putting a tire iron a tire iron 
on the other side of the rim lock about the same distance away. And I'm going to see if I can, uh, I'm going to see if I can get both tire irons to pop the bead over. Cause if, if you can get that much bead over, it usually stays. And, um, uh, Sometimes you could get one tire iron out at this point. Like if you only have two, you could pop it out and keep using it. Uh, and I'm trying to do that. I probably shouldn't have though. I probably should have just got a third one out, which I do later on. So there, I'm just going to pull this out now. Probably going to keep doing it again, but um, I should have used a third tire iron. Here I go. So, and I'm going to do this wrong here. Uh, sorry about that, but oh no, I did that right. Okay. So. Yeah, you put that other one in there, it just makes, if, once you have two stuck together like that, two tire irons real close, it makes it easier to pull one of them out. So, you'll see here, I'm, I'm, take, I'm taking the original tire iron and pulling it down, that lets the other one slip in there. And then I push the original tire iron back, which is really easy, and then, then lets the second one gets really easy and lets the first one pop out and makes the, the bead go a little further down the rim. So I move the other tire iron down an inch. I push the original one down, then I push the second one down. So yeah, you just keep repeating that. Push the first one down to get the second one in. Bend the, the, the first one all the way over, the one you already had in. And the second one follows. And then that first one just pops right out. So it's just like push. Yeah, it, it should take almost no effort if, if it goes right on this. It's real important to keep having that tire down in the center of the rim. So push that first one down for, I kind of doing them at the same time and I'm really not, you can't tell, but I'm leading with that original one and then letting the second one kind of follow. And once you get this far, it's like, it gets really easy. So I think at this point, some people just kind of pry it off with their hands, but, um, it, it's so dang easy to use these tire irons. Like I don't even, I'm just doing it all the way around. Yeah, I had Bob Dylan playing in here, and uh, YouTube wouldn't let me post my video, so that's why I'm overdubbing. Also, I've seen a lot of tire change videos, and they kind of skip over everything, and uh, you kind of wonder where they're struggling. And in this video here, I make lots of mistakes. Like, I, I can't believe how, how <laughs> you know, like, how much I'm struggling. Like, I never should have been struggling with those two tire irons. I should have just immediately got the third one out. So, you know, I don't know. I I only do this every, like, I don't know, a few months. And it's like, sometimes I forget the techniques. And then halfway through changing the tire, I'm like, oh, I remember how to do this now. So um, half the reason why I'm making this video is just for me to watch later on. <laughs> you know, next time I got to change a tire, I'm like, how do I do that? Oh, yeah. I never worked in a shop or anything. I worked in... Anyways, so there's a rim lock. And the bead buddy is going to go across from it. It's kind of hard to pry the tire off unless the other side's down. And you can't really put... You can't put the tire down where the bead lock is. So you always you always push the tire down across from the bead lock. And then, uh, and then I start the bead lock. And you don't need one of those bead buddies either. But it just... I don't know. It makes it so easy. I don't think they cost that much. I think like, probably like 10 bucks. I'm not sure. So yeah, I'm um, going to push both these tire irons over. I'm, I'm going to try to go uh, and spread these out a little bit more, like three inches or so, and see if that helps. But really it doesn't, so I don't know. It's like just, just two inches on either side of the rim lock, and it seems pretty good. Um, you'll see me struggling here when I try to go a little wider. And uh, so I get the one side over, but I just it's just a little too much. So I scoot it over, try again, eh, not quite, scoot it over just a little bit more, and I can feel it go. So it's like, that's really nice. Once you get, like I say, once you get that much tire over the rim, it tends to stay. Um, also, I, I, I think I, I used, at <clears throat> one time I tried putting Windex on before taking the tire off, and you don't really want to do that, you know, unless you want to reuse the tire, just because otherwise it, it has a tendency to like flop back right in. You know, that work that you just did there, it just tends to be, to flop right back in, so... No Windex or anything, no, on this step. See right here, I should be using three tire irons. I'm not. I'm just kind of using two, taking that out, scratching my rim a little bit. But as you can see, the rim kind of gets scratched from all the rocks and shit that I hit. So it's, it's like not really doing anything more if 
by using these tire irons. Some people get black touch-up paint. See right here, I should just be using the, the third tire iron to get that second one out. I don't know what I was thinking, but whatever. I'll, I'll probably post another one of these tire videos, and we'll just see how uh, how how I can improve over time. And then maybe I'll point people to the new one. But anyway, so I'm trying to get this uh, second tire iron in and being really careful not to grab that red liner in the in, inside. So, yeah. So I take the, put, take the one I got in, push it down so I can get the other one in. Push the, the first one down, then I push the second one down, and I take the first one out. Ah, I hope that makes sense. But, you know, just little baby steps. What, is there an inch between the irons on each one of these? And you could do more, but, you know... You just kind of—I I like to just kind of be real gentle on this stuff, especially I'm telling you there's that red inner liner I keep talking about with tubeless, and uh, it's real easy to damage it and not even know, apparently, because uh, the little red liner has wires that run through it, and uh, those wires can snap and they can eventually, I guess, pierce out of the red liner, cause cause flats or, or something like that. I don't—I'm not really sure, but anyways. So here, you, once you get it this far, like about the halfway point, you could kind of get it off by hand if you want to muscle it. But I just take it take it a couple more times with the tire irons that pops it right off. Oops, should just go right now. Yeah, there we go. So then, once you got a, once you got it popped in the middle of the tire like this, <clears throat> then it's pretty easy to kind of push the tire right off the rim. Now I have a I use pretty soft tires so you can see it just kind of smushes right off, and eventually I step on the tire which is kind of the right technique and I go oh yeah and you'll see so it's not really going but then I step on the tire yep see so you kind of step on the tire like that and it comes off easier. Now when you're gonna put the uh, the tube uh, the rim back in you use that little metal plate and you make sure you put the rim lock in first and you just kind of just kind of set it there. I forgot my tire iron so I'm gonna go grab those. All right, so you got your tire irons. And so this is kind of a gummy tire. It's real soft, too. So uh, some tires you can push the rim really far in, but I can't really even get started on these. So I just, uh, you just put the tire iron in there and spoon it on real slow. Usually you do it in the front, but this time I just kind of grabbed the whole tire and, <laughs> and pushed it all on. Anyways. And the, the kind of key is to keep some light pressure on the rim itself on the inside. You can see I always have a hand pushing down. And uh, if you don't, it'll just pop right back out and you'll have to start over. But if you, anyways, when you get your tire iron, it has to fit in. There's this little space you see right there. You'll notice there's like this one space on either side you can grab that's between the tire and the red liner. And uh, you can actually just do it with one tire and that's why I threw the other one down. See right there, you got to get it right in that little crack and it just pops a little bit more. Keep doing it on one side or you can alternate. And then eventually you could just feel it wanting to go in. You can't really grab you can't really get uh too big a bites on here and have this work. So you just see these little small bites right there in that little key key spot where the red liner the tires just pops up. There, it just there you go, it just fit right in. <coughs> Excuse me. Then you can take off that metal plate, and you're all good. So now we just gotta reverse it. So um, I use this slime stuff, and I'm putting a layer of it so that uh, it it's on the red liner, and that's gonna touch the tube because that's where the seal needs to be for this for these tubeless tires. And a lot of people don't do this; they just use soapy water, and some people have different kinds of sealant that they use. And, you know, most people right here, they'll put Windex on the on here, but I just use more slime and I like it. It doesn't really completely dry, so you don't have to go so fast and it's really slippery too. So this makes, it's a little bit messy, but stuff washes off with water. Anyway, so I'm going to, I'm going to start the, the tire off opposite side of the rim lock here. I'm just going to put a bead buddy on this side very awkwardly. There we go. <laughs> then you can pretty much, uh, your first bite, you can, you can almost get, uh, not doing a very good job here. You all walk around, but you can get about, 
I don't know, I'd say a third of the tire on, at least on this first bite. Here we go. So he's kind of, you can see it, it just doesn't take hardly anything. You get almost, almost halfway done here with the second one. And what you do is you don't want to go past the rim lock. So stop just before you get to the rim lock there. And then just uh, start over on the other side of the bead, buddy. It's pretty easy right there. Really, it, it doesn't get difficult till you get to the end. And if you if you are making sure that <clears throat> the tire is seated down in the in the middle of the rim, like it, it really it takes two fingers to pull the tire iron back. Even the last step, it takes like no effort. So. So anyways, I am uh, pushing that one forward, putting the next one in, pushing the original one back down, and then the second one down. That lets the, the original one come out with no pressure at all. So you push that old one forward to get the new one in, put the old one back, put the new one back, take the old one out. You just keep doing this over and over. And, you know, an inch away, you don't got to take big bites on this. I guess if you're in a hurry, maybe, but you really, really have to be super gentle. That sounds funny, but you got to be super gentle with that tire bead because you'll get, uh, you won't get a good seal on the tubeless and the tire might, and, and you won't get a warranty from the tire manufacturer apparently either, according to, uh, whatever, Slavens Racing. You guys probably watch that guy, Jeff Slavens. And, uh, he's got tire changing videos just like a lot of people do, but this is just me being an average Joe. Anyways, I'm right at the rim lock end, but it's, see how it, it's just, it's nothing. And I used to use those Motion Pro spoons. I've used, tried lots of different spoons, uh, spoons, tire irons, and I just like these ones. They have that, uh, they have that nice, uh, bend, which helps, helps a lot, I think. And they don't have very sharp ends, so it's, uh, a lot harder to, like, gouge a, gouge that inner liner. Anyways, I'm putting more slime on the inside. It's kind of hard to get to uh, right here. So um, a lot of times I just pull a bunch in my hand and I really carefully coat the inside with my hand. I'll show you in a second here. But a lot of people, like I say, they don't do this step. So you guys can do it or not. I don't really care. So now I'm putting it on the inside. The inside of the tire is what's gonna contact that red liner and uh, that's going to need to be an airtight seal in order to hold uh, your air over over time. My... I, I could probably have coated the whole tire on the uh, coated the tire on the inside before I put it on. But so to make this step a little bit easier, but whatever. You definitely, you don't really need this to put this on here either, but like I said, I just make it slippery. Some people use Windex. Uh, whatever you use, don't use something that is going to get slippery again if it gets wet again. Uh, like, what do people use? I'm trying to think, like, anyway. Well, soapy water. I think some people use soapy water. And uh, that's okay, except for if it gets wet again, it gets slippery again. So uh, I think you should probably use something that, um, yeah doesn't you want your rim to be you want your tire to be stuck to the rim pretty much not all slippery so i'm going to put a bead buddy across in the rim lock again actually i'm going to first i'm going to drop it inside of the, the spokes there all right, all right put it in the middle so the rim locks across so i'm going to put the bead buddy in the back so i put one tire iron on either side of the spoke i'm planning on putting my bead buddy on And that just lets the bead buddy drop right in. All right, yep, now I'm just gonna start getting my way close to the rim lock again. I'm gonna stop right before I get to the rim lock and then start working on the other side. So I'm putting the new one in. Yeah, this this part's really easy. Uh, it's, it's getting the second half on that's tough. 
you could probably do just about any technique to get the first half on. But the idea is you let up on a spoon to get the other one in. And then you push down on the spoon to get the original one out. I don't know. You should get into a rhythm on this. It's just, it's, it's just if you're fighting it at all, it's you're just not doing it right. Like it's And it's almost always because you don't have that tire down in the drop center of the rim. You'll see me struggling on this one towards the end here because uh, I don't know if you could tell, but that, that, that tire part that was just in front of it's not really dropped down. See how it's not in and anyways, I'm trying to just get the tire in a good position for you guys to see. So that, that tire iron comes out really good. And I let pressure off that one that's in there, put the first one down, second one. It's just, it's just, it's just pretty easy. And uh, once I get here, I, I realize that it's starting to get hard for some reason, so I'm, something must be going wrong. I'll show you. Not here. That one was easy. That I think right here I'm starting to feel like it's a little bit tense. Let's see, a little bit, uh, not tense, a little bit uh, tight. So I push down. I'm going to push down all around. Poop, and it just popped down. It might not be easy, but it just popped down, and I'm... I'm Pushing the whole tire as much as I can down that drop center. And uh, I don't know why, but sometimes you take the, the bead buddy out at this point. It makes it easier, too. Um, I noticed that on the front tire, because there's just not a lot of room uh, for the front tire, especially with that tubeless in there. So the last step, sometimes you, you got to just take that bead buddy out, and that gets you a little bit more into the drop center. I think. I could be wrong about that, but... Um, so... So I let pressure off that second one to get the new one in, or the original one to get the new one in. And then in order, I push them down. You don't push them down at the same time. Because the one that's already in there, you could bend that one back and forth, and there's no real no real uh, pressure on the tire. And I am going very slow in this video. I'm sorry. I don't know. But it's 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 fine. And I'm talking about a bunch of stuff right now, blah, blah, blah. But it's not really that big of a deal. So, but it's just, I don't know if you can see, I'm hardly using any, any force at all, you know? And so it just popped in and it pops in that easy because you have that some sort of, uh, some sort of a, a lubricant on there. <laughs> lubricant. Anyway, so yeah, then you put your uh, valve stems back in <laughs> if you don't you'll pump up your tire and then you'll take your the hose off and it all there or come out again and uh yeah i did that on this but i didn't show you that so you put your valve stems back in and i remember when i was first doing tires too i never had a valve stem remover i didn't know what they looked like so that's why i was trying to show you guys that well anyways now you just kind of bounce the tire around there and it'll set it up really nicely so that when you put the, the high pressure tube full of air, the tire should be seated nicely around the rim. Once you fill it with air too, make sure you look around the rim and, and make sure that it's really even. Because every once in a while you'll get a little bulge on one side or the other. It just doesn't seat right. And so you got to make sure. I think nine times out of ten it does it fine. But I have seen it. I can't remember what when but I've, or what, what instances I've seen it. But sometimes... You get a little bulge on one side and you got to fix that. I think bouncing the tire up and down seems to help with that, though. I don't know. Um, so I have my nice little Motion Pro thing. This thing is like my favorite tool in the world. It was a little expensive, but man, is it cool. So I, I do my back tire at 8, my front tire at 10 pounds. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's how I do it. Oh, yeah. And put the rim lock back on.